I don't know what to do here. The Knight of Pentacles reversed. The Eight of Cups reversed. The Star. I need help with this, but not just from anyone. Maybe from like someone that the World Divination Association would name their best divination teacher in 2022. Operator, connect me to Christiana Gaudet. Welcome to Music, Myth, and Magic. I'm Eric Arcadian, and today I'm talking to Christiana Gaudet a certified tarot grandmaster, author, tarot reader, and teacher. The World Divination Association named her the best tarot reader in 2021 and 2022, and best divination teacher in 2022. Hi, Christiana. Thanks for being here. Hey, Eric. Thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited. <laughs> I'm very excited. And uh, I thought, Maybe the first thing we could talk about since you brought it up the last time you were here with my coven is if you would like to tell the story of how we first met and why I'm indebted to you for my life. <laughs> oh, I'm delighted to tell this story. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So at FPG, and this was my first time being at FPG, I think. I could be wrong about that. But at FPG, which for those who don't know is Florida Pagan Gathering, it is a... Uh, a legacy pagan festival held twice a year in Florida. I was very excited to be a headliner and a vendor. So I'm in the vending area doing readings for people, which is such a fun thing for me because I'm a full-time reader. I'm coming to you from my reading room. And so to be able to be outside under a tent, doing like just quick readings for people is something I did when I was coming up, but don't get to do very often. So I was super excited to be doing that. All right. So a lovely young lady comes for a reading and it's very clear in the cards that she is trying to figure out what to do romantically. And she is a young, lo lovely young lady, so it is not surprising that there is more than one gentleman who has her attention and who has is, is making a play for a relationship with her. And it turns out, and I can see this in the cards, and we're talking about it, and she's like, yeah, and they're both over there. Now, one of those men was you. So... I'm looking at the cards and I can see that very clearly one of these men is the far better man, far better as a human being and far better for her. And I say as much and she's like, okay. And she leaves the table. And uh, later on, I discovered that the far better man was you and you are now her husband. <laughs> And for that, I owe you an eternal gret of that of, of gratitude. Thank you. And I, you know, I want to I want to say that when you read me that day, I remember that you you kind of asked me what I did for a living, what I was doing for work, and I told you what I was doing at the time, and you were kind of like, "No, I don't think you should." really be doing that that's not what you're meant to do and you asked me if i had any artistic inclinations and i told you about music and you sat there for like five or ten minutes just kind of giving me like practical advice and and you were saying why don't you try this why don't you try this and i just sat there and i was I was terrified because i felt like i was just giving you excuse after excuse and you saw right through me and then you know you were just kind of like okay well just keep that in mind and so now we're several years later and every time i've seen you just about you have checked in with me and said you know are you doing something musical 
And it's an honor to have you here now that I finally am and I can include you in what I'm doing. So thank you for being here and thank you for being you and encouraging and supporting along the way. Well, thank you so much and thank you for your support of what I do. And, and thank you for honoring your musical gift because uh, that matters to everybody. You know, when creative people honor their gift, the whole world is better. I agree. Thank you. So let's talk about you and your gifts and what got you into tarot. How did you get started on this path? Ah, so, okay, I will, I'll, I'll run through this as quickly as I can. It is a fun origin story. Um, I have always been a spiritual person, very naturally. Uh, I was born to a single mother in 1962, which is its whole interesting story. And um, my mother was, was very spiritual. She was into Edgar Cayce. And I, being a precocious child, started reading those Edgar Cayce books as soon as I could read. Uh, when I was eight, my mother was the queen of the Christmas stocking. And I, I carried on that legacy with my kids and, and will also with my grandkids. But every year, my stocking would be filled with the most fun things. When I was eight, I received the, the Gee Witch uh, divination deck. Um, still published by us games in my christmas stocking and it was meant to be just like a kind of joke gift but right away i read the instructions i did readings with it and i saw truth in it and i went to see the adults and the adults were like ah it's just coincidence it's nothing but at that moment i knew divination was real okay fine so my mother marries the Methodist minister, and I end up being the daughter of a Methodist minister, which was, you know, an, an interesting thing. Um, but what was important about that was being active in the church's music program and recognizing, like, that's when I first came to understand the power of music to move us spiritually and emotionally. And so that was super important. Um, when I was 19, I dated a guy who was really into the I Ching, which is, of course, the ancient Chinese method of divination. So he taught me to do that. So I'm like tossing coins and consulting the book of changes. And, and that was cool. Um, fast forward to age 24, when I read The Mists of Avalon, which, of course, is a work of fiction. Uh, Marion Zimmer Bradley, who has unfortunately since her passing there she's got some problems you know there's problems with her she's uh she's not someone we can look at as a saint in our community but it was that piece of fiction that opened me up to my pagan path that was the thing so from there i get bucky's big blue book right did you even know Bucky's Big Blue Book? Is that still oh, a thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's on our okay. reading list, actually, for the coven. <laughs> okay. And Uncle Bucky says that every witch has to have a thing they can do. You know, like their specialty. Maybe you're an herbalist, you know. Maybe you heal with your hands. And I remembered back to the I Ching, and I remembered back to my, my uh, fortune-telling cards, and I was like, oh, it's tarot. It is tarot for me. But... I also resisted it because I could not believe that 78 pieces of cardboard could hold truth for me. <laughs> and yet they called to me and they called to me and they called to me. Now, at this time, what I am into in my life is the Grateful Dead. Every bit of energy, every resource that I have is to get me to as many Grateful Dead shows and adjacent events as possible across the country. So I find myself in the back seat of a slant six Ford that my friends and I had bought on the road while we were hitchhiking together. Yes, that happened. And I've got in my backpack a tarot deck and an Eden Gray book. And it's the rider deck in the yellow box with the plaid background that we all started with, or in my generation we did. And I read that book and I play with the cards 
and I end up doing my first readings in the Grateful Dead parking lot, spreading out a blanket, making a handwritten sign that says tarot readings free, um, except my handwriting really sucks. And so it's looked like toast readings. So a guy walks up to me and he doesn't look like he should be in the Grateful Dead parking lot. He's got really short hair, he's, you know, clean shave and all of that. And he walks up and he's like, you're giving away toast? And I'm like, no, no, tarot, tarot. And he was the very first reading I did for an absolute stranger. And that was, that was it. At that point, I'm like, okay, this is, this is who I am and this is what I do. It took a lot to get from there to where I am now. But it's really born of reading books for hours on end, going through corn and wheat in the American landscape, following the greatest American band, and then being in that parking lot and uh, doing free toast readings. Wow. So you said you did your first personal reading for yourself when you were eight? Yeah. And so yeah. would you say that was pretty much like a purely intuitive or were you studying like the little book? I read the paper, a paper, you know, the little white book is what we call it. But then I don't even think it was a booklet. I think it was a paper that folded <laughs> out and I still have the deck, but the, the directions are missing. Um, I read it. I followed the instructions. I did the reading. It was very mechanical from my, my memory is that it was very mechanical. But the truth that was there uh, was significant. And I did have an ability to like look at the card, think about its meaning and extrapolate what that would mean in my life. Later on, when I was like 19 and doing I Ching, all of my friends were doing it too. We all had the book, but they would all get me to do the readings because I could do that extrapolation. I could say, oh, this is about this in your life. And so even at age eight, I did have that ability. And I think that's the difference between someone who can read a book and say, this card means this, and someone who can do a reading. It's that ability to say, this is what this means in your life. And I could do that even as a child. That's amazing. That's amazing. And so you kind of got into this whole thing uh, as fuel to chase after the dead. And how long did it take you doing that? And I met, were you, were you doing charged readings at, at the shows? Never, 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 never. Um, and then when we were off tour, I'm living in an apartment in New Haven, Connecticut, selling flowers on the street. That was like literally my job was selling flowers on the street outside of the very famous Toad's Place nightclub. Um, you know, so, so there that is. And it was not for years. I mean, I'm just doing readings for friends and people are like coming knocking on my door because usually my phone would be turned off because we did not pay our phone bill and we did not have cell phones back then. So people would just come knocking at the door with like a bottle of wine or some cookies that just baked and saying, this is my friend. Would you read for my friend? And so people started bringing me gifts in exchange for readings, right? And so, and I, I tell my students that now, like, you know, you are ready to be a pro reader when people pay you when you don't ask, <laughs> right? And you see in all of these study groups online, I don't know how to get people to pay me. My thought is if you're a good reader, people will want to pay you, <laughs> right? There, there it is. And so it was not, okay, so now we fast forward a little bit further. Um, and I meet the person who becomes my husband, John. And, um, and at this point, I have a son, I, I have a two year old child. And, and John's like, you know, you're a smart woman, what, what are you doing with your life like it was clear like I'm, I'm selling flowers on the street i don't have much of a job i'm not doing much it's just me and my baby what's going on and i said well there's only one thing i'm good at but i have no idea how to turn it into a business and i told him and he's like oh okay 
He called me up like two days later and says, okay, Saturday morning, I'm picking you up. Wear your best stuff. I'm taking you to go work at a psychic fair. He, he had hooked me up with a psychic fair. That was my first professional gig. He became my husband, my business manager to this day. He is my business partner. He runs this business with me. He runs StarCon with me. Um, and, you know, that was, you know, like 30 years ago. So that's how that all happened. Well, that's cool. So um, you have gone through all of that origin story and now you're into a bunch of really interesting stuff. You have a beautiful office. It's in Palm Bay, correct? Uh, uh, Palm City. Palm, Palm City. City, sorry. Yes, it's it's a wonderful right. office. You've got lots of cool web conferencing stuff and shelves filled with tarot decks out there. You've got a couple books <laughs> out that you wrote. One is mm -hmm. Fortune Stellar and the other one is Tarot Tour Guide. Right now, I read right. Tarot Tour Guide and I, I really enjoyed a lot of the content in there was stuff that I've come to see you teach at classes. So I know that's mm -hmm. some very practical stuff that's good for everybody. And would you say Fortune Stellar is more for the person who's trying to be like a professional reader? Yes, indeed. That's exactly right. The subtitle is what every professional tarot reader needs to know. And so if you are a professional reader, if you want to be a professional reader, I wrote Fortune Stellar for you. Perfect. And another one of the things that you're doing is StarCon, which you mentioned just a couple minutes ago. So what can you tell me about StarCon? Okay, so StarCon is the world's first and currently only multi-track hybrid tarot and divination conference. We meet in person in West Palm Beach at the Hilton Palm Beach Airport Hotel and also online on the Excelevance um, conferencing platform. And so you can join us in person or online. It's a three day conference and we have like everything. It's astrology, it's tarot, it's every kind of divination, magic, all kinds of stuff. And then we have the afterglow where we are all on the Excelevance platform. We can watch recordings of the presentations that we missed. We have live events in the Excelevance lounges. And in the past few years, we've only been doing this since 21. The first time we did it was just online for obvious reasons. Um, it used to be that the afterglow was only 30 days. Now the afterglow is a full year. So the conference ends and then a full year of online community and growth and study begins. That's all included with your conference ticket. Okay. And where can people get the tickets if that's something they'd like to attend? Sure. All you have to do is go to our website. It's starcon.com and that's S-T-A-A-R-C-O-N.com. Perfect. And I will post the link in the video description as well. So all you have to do is click. Um, I think that's really cool. I'm looking forward to it. I hope we can attend at least partially uh, virtually. Yeah. So if we're moving on, jump into to some tarot topics a little bit. What do you think would be the number one question people ask you? I have an idea what I think it is, but what what do you think people ask you the most if they're just having trouble? You know, the stereotypical answer would be something about love and romance. But honestly, I have done and and I I teach my my professional students, the students who want to be professional that this is a thing you can do. Um I have cultivated over time a really high level practice with very, very switched on clients. Most of my clients, you know, their primary question is, tell me everything I need to know. Because 
they are aware that, yeah, they may be suffering with this problem or that problem. And sometimes people will call me with very specific work problems or love life problems or family problems or whatever. But I really try to do a comprehensive reading, which will answer every question. Because if you tell me you just have one question in life, I think you're not looking deep enough. I don't think I've ever come to you with a specific question. And I've come to you with for readings all the time. And, and that's, that's what I say is, you know, what do I need to know today? What does the universe want me to know? Right. And I think I think that's something you taught me to ask at one of your classes. Go, it was probably the class at FPG. Yeah, so that's exactly right. And, uh, you know, the readers that will complain about, you know, it's everyone want to know if they're going to get back together with their ex. And and that's a hard practice. You know, that that's a hard thing to do. Um, can I do those readings? Sure. But if you're looking for me to just say something in the moment that's going to make you feel better in the moment but not be true, I'm not the reader for you. Yeah, you do give some hard truths. I think that's actually the title of your uh, your YouTube chat group, mm -hmm. right? No, I have uh, class coming up. Hard yeah. Truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's gonna What's gonna yeah. be involved in that? Yes. Yeah, so on, yeah, so on YouTube, um, you can have members on your YouTube channel. Once you have like a certain number of subscribers, you can have members. So I have that number of sub subscribers, thankfully, so I have members. So once a month, I do a members only live stream. So the only way to get into this live stream or to watch the replay is to be a member. There's three levels of membership. The cheapest one is five bucks a month. It's so worth it. You should do it. Uh, but so this month, the class is hard truths. And we're going to talk about every aspect of the hard truths of tarot, which includes the fact that tarot itself is slippery and tricky and really hard to fit into the box that everyone wants it to, right? So like just figuring out how to be a good tarot reader, there's a lot of hard truths attached to that. There are the difficult cards, the 10 of swords, for example, there's a lot of hard truths in that card. There is the, how do you give hard truths to people? If you're reading for someone, how do you give a hard truth with compassion and with understanding? And how do you figure out the right way to share that with someone so you're in your integrity, but you're also not being mean because, you know, there's like no, you know, there's enough meanness in the world. Um, and then if you're reading for yourself or someone else is reading for you and they give you a hard truth, how do you take it? How does that help? How does it help to know what is true? You know, the, the truth, I, I always say there are no good cards, there are no bad cards, right? Um, every card exists for a reason. And honestly, there is nothing good in the world and there is nothing bad in the world. There's only what you like and what you want and what you don't like and what you don't want. And sometimes a reading is going to make you face something you don't like and something you don't want. And where is the value in that? And I think there is great value in that in terms of mental health, in terms of preparedness, in terms of our ability to process trauma knowing what's going on there there is so much that is beneficial to embracing hard truths in life in general um and tarot helps us do that well that sounds really interesting um hopefully we don't have any hard truths today but were you willing to do like a card poll and give us a general overview reading for the day i will I will, I will. So for, okay, so here's what we're going to do. This is going to be just a general bit of advice, knowledge, and contemplation for anyone who is watching this, listening to this, 
um, in the moment that you are. And if this feels like something resonant, then take it to your heart as truth. And um, for these kinds of things, I very often like three cards, no position. And it is the Knight of Pentacles reversed, the Eight of Cups reversed, and the Star. So here is the message, okay? Very often in the day-to-day -day world, things do not go the way we want. You know, these are the hard truths. With the Knight of Pentacles reversed, we th see things taking a long time. Never enough resources, never enough time, never enough money, never enough of the things we need. And with the Eight of Cups reversed, we can feel so stuck in that. But when you are stuck in that, what do we call it? Stuck on the treadmill, stuck in the rat race. Uh, when you're stuck in that, never lose sight. And here we have the star. Never lose sight of hope. Never lose sight of magic. So often we in the magical community sort of separate the magic and the mundane. But magic is here to help you with your mundane life. So don't forget to use it. I feel so called out right now. Are you sure that was a general reading or were you just talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> if it resonates, you may take it to your heart. <laughs> Thank you for the advice and for the reading. I have a question. I actually have something I have always wanted to ask you, but for some reason yes. I never have because I never think about it. When you're reading, do you typically use a particular spread? Because I see you just flipping through the cards on our Zoom readings. Yeah. So typically, um, and, and you've seen me do this, I will start with an 11 card Celtic cross. And um, this was a spread that I learned in the, the one and only uh, series of tarot classes I took in a New Age shop back in the 80s. And most Celtic cross spreads are 10 cards. This is 11. Weird musical reference, uh, which is just an internal joke for me. Uh, do you know the movie Spinal Tap? Of course. <laughs> of course you do. So, you know, like, don't even look at that guitar, right? But this amp goes up to 11. Well, why is that special? Well, it's 11. That's one, one, one more than 10. Of course it's special. So why is my Celtic cross reading special? It's one more than 10. <laughs> so my preferred way to read is to start with that without a question. Let me just see what happens. And I call this a comprehensive spread. Um, there are other comprehensive spreads, the Seven Sisters, the Astrology Wheel. It'll show something from most departments of life. And that's why you don't need a question to start, because we're going to do that. But then, once I see what I see, I get the lay of the land, I figure out what the questions are, then I'm going to pick up all those cards, I'm going to shuffle them, and then I'm going to dialogue with the cards. We're going to ask a question, we're going to pull some cards, and we just keep on asking questions and pulling cards until we get all the questions and all the answers, because I believe that figuring out what questions we need to ask in a reading and in every reading we should ask many questions figuring out those questions that's an intuitive process too you know spirit will give us our questions just as spirit gives us our answers when we open up to sacred space in divination i i have definitely noticed that about sitting in a reading with you, you ask more questions than I do. So I don't even come with the question. You start asking me questions based on what you see in the cards. And that's something that you had brought up in the court cards class that you recently came and did for our coven, you know, because you taught us that the court cards can mean so many different things. So when that comes out in a reading, you ask, you know, is there a man in your life? Is there, are you thinking about going back to school? These sorts of questions so that you can determine what the court card is representing in that space. And you have to have that dialogue with the client or out loud with yourself to figure out what's going on in the reading. Exactly. 
That's exactly how I do it. And and I it's interesting to note that this technique is something that developed very organically for me in that first psychic fair and in that parking lot and when I'm reading for friends because we didn't have the internet. I didn't have access to a bunch of books. Um, I just had my cards and I had to answer questions and I had to figure things out. So I just did what worked. And I think one of the problems I see with newer readers, because now like you have access to everyone, like we've got access to Mary Kay Greer. Um, you know, when I first learned about Mary Kay Greer, she was just a tiny little picture on the back of a book in the bookshop. And so now that we have access to all of these videos and all of these study groups and all of these people, we're very concerned with doing it the right way. And the right way apparently is what those people who have been doing it for a long time or those people who have a big social media following say is the right way. And what I'm going to say is, you know, don't forget to find the right way for you. Yeah. Personal practice. What works for you is not necessarily what it's going to say in the book, but if it works for you, then it's the right thing. Um, can we talk about tarot magic for a minute? Because yes. that's a concept yes. that you introduced me to and I think I, I always wanted to use the cards for something magical because going back to our first altar that Celine and I had, we didn't have statues of the god and goddess. So we used the next best thing, which is the sun and the moon tarot cards up on the altar to right. be the archetypal symbols. But you have shown me a uh, couple pretty cool techniques for doing some tarot magic um if you'd like to sure. talk about that and and i love what you did um you know to use the cards to symbolize or to invoke deity or the four elements um using the aces to call the four elements or court cards i mean that's great but yeah here in this deck you've got 78 magical tools we know how magic works, right? Magic is um, on some level, it's all about as above, so below, sympathetic magic. What happens in the small also happens in the big, right? And like attracts like, whatever, you know, whatever herb, whatever stone, you know, is the same energy as what you're trying to attract. That's the herb, that's the stone you're gonna use, that's the tarot card you're going to use. Here we have 78 energies. So if there's something you want to attract into your life, you find by looking through the deck face up, you find the card or cards that represent what you need in your life at this time. So say, okay, Suppose you are house hunting, you're looking for an affordable apartment, good luck with that, um, or you're looking to purchase a house or whatever. Uh, the Ten of Pentacles is the card of real estate. It's the castle card. So you might choose this card. You might print it out and put it on your wall. You might make it small and carry it with you when you go house hunting. If you're trying to sell your house, same thing. You might print out a picture of your house and also this card and put them on your altar um, by make out a check for the amount of money you want to get for the house, put that all on your altar. So there's that. Now we think about magic and really magic is either going to attract, build and support growing something, or it's going to diminish or banish something, make something go away. Well, we can do banishing magic with tarot as well. What is it that's in your life that needs to go away? Um, find that card. Okay, so just the first one I came to that made sense. Suppose you were struggling with depression or insomnia or nightmares. You might find this card 
And, you know, what you're going to do is, you know, think about what that card represents and how that is in your life and think about what your life is going to be like when you don't have that energy anymore. And you can just take it, slam it face down and say, I banish you and let that energy go. You can also print it out and burn it. Um, I once um, printed out the 10 of swords and stabbed it a hundred times with my athame. I did that. It worked too. <laughs> that sounds like a fun one. <laughs> well, it was necessary in the moment. What about uh, putting some energy into turning the reversed cards to reorient where your oh, energy is headed in, in a reading? Yeah. And that's, you know, if you are someone who uses reversals, and I love reversals, um, you can always, in a reading, either turn a reverse card right side up to welcome that energy, or reverse a card that you don't want to diminish that energy. So you're going to do it very consciously. So say, for example, you get the chariot reversed in a spread, and you're interpreting that, that um, your old beat up car is on its last legs and you're not sure how you're going to fix it or afford a new car or whatever. And so we might turn this right side up to welcome appropriate transportation solutions, right? There it is. Or suppose, Suppose, mm. three of swords. Suppose you're in a place where you're dealing with heartache. You're in grief, you're in heartache, and you're having a hard time heal. You might want to turn that upside down to welcome healing. When this card is reversed, the swords can fall out of the heart. Ah. It's a lovely visual. I think the first yeah. time... I saw you do that was on like a Facebook live reading where you were just reading for people that were tuning into you doing one card pulls and you gave somebody a reading and it was not, it was not a fortuitous card. It was something that was reversed. I don't, it was rather bleak outlook. And then, you know, you said, just put some energy and we're going to fix that and turn that right around. And you spun the card around for her. And I was like, Oh, that's so easy. And that's one of the things that you definitely have a gift for is you take really complicated topics and you make them really simple to understand. So thank that's you. Why we love coming to you for your classes. <laughs> and another tarot magic that really stuck out to me that you showed us last time. And I really felt this one was using the card as a focal point for the elemental energy and bringing it into your body and drawing whatever energy is that you need from the cards. So suppose, okay, Queen of Swords, suppose I'm going to be working on writing or have to, having to do public speaking or something. The Queen of Swords would really support that. So I might take that and hold it to my throat and breathe its energy into my throat chakra so that I may have the, the cognitive ability. I can find the words. I can speak the words. I can write the words. They'll be true. They'll be understandable just by breathing that energy in. I'm going to do that for my next interview, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think we are almost to the point where I have to ask you the music, myth, and magic signature question. But before we get there, how can people find you if they oh, want to I reach really out to you? That. Sure, sure. My website is simply first name, last name. So christianagaudet.com. You can also find me using those names, Christiana Gaudet. You can find me on Facebook. My business page is Christiana Gaudet. My personal page, which is so much more fun, is uh, just has my middle initial C, Christiana C. Gaudet. I'm also on TikTok. I'm having a lot of fun there. 
Christiana Godet Tarot on TikTok, which is also my YouTube channel, Christiana Godet Tarot on YouTube, where I am your tarot fairy godmother. <laughs> Perfect. I will post links to all of those wonderful social media and websites in the video description. So again, all you have to do is click and you'll find Christiana and you're open for readings and virtual appointments. People can book on your website, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can, uh, you can text me, you can call me or you can go to my website and, and book, um, automatically using, um, using my scheduling platform. Excellent. Okay. Time for the signature question. How do you use sound or music in your personal practice? Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. So there's a few things there. Obviously, since I've already revealed that my origin story is following the Grateful Dead, I am a deadhead. And, you know, so, you know, between the Methodist Church and the Grateful Dead, music really formed the underpinning of my spiritual life and in a lot of ways. Now you can kind of see in the background, you can see my drums over to the side. You can't see it. My guitars are there, my ukulele. I have a lot of instruments. I love to play music. I am not a good musician. I'm really not. Um, so I try to be as musical adjacent as I can be just in my life in general. Now, I want to tell a quick story of how I found my spiritual voice. Um, I, I have a loud voice. I don't have a great singing voice. I have a loud speaking voice. I have a good speaking voice. I ended up with a career in radio. Um, in, in tarot, I've been the, uh, the resident, uh, the resident psychic of like 24 different radio stations. Um, but but when I was growing up, my mother was very noise sensitive and I have a loud voice. I heard over and over again, Christiana, lower your voice, lower your voice, lower your voice. So by the time I was a grown up, I was afraid of my voice. I had no singing voice, even though I grew up singing in the church choir. I didn't really have a singing voice. I didn't have a voice in a lot of ways. Um, so, um, early on in the traveling from dead show to dead show, there's this thing exists that exists called rainbow gatherings. I am not advocating rainbow gatherings. Um, they were weird back in the day and I think they're weirder now, but back in the eighties, we would go from dead shows to rainbow gatherings to dead shows and rainbow gatherings were sort of like summer camp for hippies. And so I am at a regional rainbow gathering in Vermont. It's nighttime. There's a big fire. There's people around the fire drumming and they're doing pagan chanting. I had been to a pagan chanting class. I was aware of pagan chanting, but I had never had the courage to do it. So the chanting starts and, and I'm like, this cannot continue. I must have a voice. I must have a voice. And so I do like a whole energy thing. I plant my feet in the ground. I bring energy up and I'm like, goddess, give me your voice. And I open my mouth and I join the chant and sound actually comes out. I actually am chanting and I hear from the background, I hear, oh my gosh, is that Christiana? And I'll always remember that because no one knew I had a voice. So that was the beginning, right? And from there, I would use chanting in my home coven we brought, you know, chanting was like a huge part of what we would do. And to this day, like the breath is the source of all magic. If you can breathe, you can do magic. If you can breathe, you can divine, right? The breath is how we get into everything. The breath is also the song. The breath and the song are the same, right? So every day, 
I will breathe, I will tone, I will chant. And I do it very privately, but that's how I, that's how I get there. That's how I do it. Um, so there's that piece of it. Um, I also love to write chants. And this is where, like, maybe we can work together because yeah. I would really like to release an album of chants, like a Wheel of the Year album of chants. I'm trying to write a chant for each holiday. Uh, but obviously, I can't perform them in a, in a way that would be recording worthy. So we should talk. Um, so that's a thing that I'm working on creatively just as a way of honoring the Wheel of the Year. Um, I also recognize, like, okay, so there's breath. And there's rhythm. And the other source of magic, as I see it, is repetitive rhythm, which is also breath, because breath is rhythm, right? So it's all one thing. And so I work a lot with rhythm. And here is a trick, um, not a trickery kind of a trick, but in, in doing readings, I am not trying to indoctrinate anyone into anything, and I'm not trying to change anyone's mind on anything, except if you come into my office thinking that you are worthless, I want you to leave my office knowing that you have worth, right? You know, so on that level, I am here to change your mind about things. And I have discovered that with breath and with rhythm, and with conscious tone in my voice, when I deliver those messages, they are more easily heard and received if I pay attention to those things. So I am not singing my reading, but in a very real way I am. That is beautiful. I think you are touching on, on such a core bit of magic that is within every one of us and that's everything we say every word that comes out of our mouth is magic and it's sound and you're right the breath the voice they're all magic a hundred percent of the time we just take them for granted because we use them all day every day and sometimes they don't seem so magical but with just a little bit of a shift of of perspective you can sit there and deliver a message. You can talk to them to a person like you normally would be, but you can talk to them magically and deliver the magical message instead of just your plain mundane conversation. Now, do you happen 100%. to remember what chant it was that you sang at that first pagan gathering where you found your voice? I'm, maybe you don't remember. I'm just really curious. I would love to know. Isis Astarte Diana Hecate Demeter Kali Inanna. It was that. Thank you. Goddess chant. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we have gone over the amount of time that I asked you to sit here with me for, and I am so appreciative that you came and you shared all your wonderful knowledge and information with us. And with that, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. Again, you have my great thanks, and I hope to see you soon, either on YouTube, online at StarCon, or in person at an event. So I will post all your links below in the video description. And to anybody who's watching, if you need a tarot reading, here's the person to cut in contact with. Thank you, Christiana. Eric, thank you so much. It's really been, I mean, it's a pleasure to know you and, and thank you so much for, um, for the honor of being here with you. I hope you will come back in the future and talk more with me on this channel. I'd be happy to. Thank you. I will talk to you later. Bye. Well, I certainly feel much better about these three cards. A big thank you to Christiana for that lovely reminder that so many of the things we do each day are magical. 
be sure to check out her links in the video description below. Maybe think about grabbing a ticket to StarCon so you can learn more. I'll be talking to other interesting people soon, so be sure to like and subscribe here so that you're notified when I put out new videos. If you'd like to help support me, you can check out my Patreon page below. Also, follow me on Facebook at Eric Arcadian. Remember, there's always a way to make music. Until next time, guys.